point where I'm about to do this about about warfare and my voice is being attacked. Yeah. It's okay. Take mm -hmm. it as a extra sign of what this is about. Yeah. Because I don't think the enemy wants this. No, yeah. I, <clears throat> and this is about that we have to we are still to overcome in mm -hmm. the end uh, in the end days. It says yeah. they will overcome. Right. <clears throat> I was in a uh I ministered in India and at the at towards the end of that mission we're about to pray to give thanks to God and there was like a banquet thing we're about to give, and the guy who had sort of been like a bodyguard to me, like an armor bearer, it was a very dangerous, very dangerous mission. And all of a sudden, I'm about to pray. He goes like this, falls backwards. He's in maybe 60 years old, 50, late 50, falls backwards onto the table. Table crashes down, goes into convulsions, blood coming out. And just, just it was, looked like it was the end of his life. It ended up. They could never find any sign of what that was. It disappeared after that. There wasn't one sign of anything. Nothing was wrong with him, not at all. But it was just when we had gone into the enemy's territory, uh, yeah. he, was, he was bearing the brunt of it. Yeah. And, what, and here is a scripture. It says in 1 Peter 5, Be sober, for your adversary the devil goes around as a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, there's some people who take this, meaning... The enemy is roaring so because he really doesn't have any real power, so it's just roaring, and that's, that's it. Mm. And there are others who say that the enemy is very dangerous. The truth is sort of in the middle, and I'll give you an example. A lion, when it's going to hunt, does not roar. When a lion's going to devour, it doesn't roar. Mm. A lion roars when it's warning. So the, but what about the devil? The, if the devil's roaring all the time, it tells us something. He's roaring to make us panic and make us, make us afraid by whatever he's doing, uh -huh. and that's how he wins. And the thing is, this, it's a, roaring is a show. It's not a real power. Uh -huh. And now the enemy, I'll, I'll give you something. We, we, we're talking about the harbinger, and we talked about the, the terrorists, the Assyrians. I'm going to read you something from the Bible that actually is going to take you right into, you're actually going to hear the voice of the terrorist. It's actually going to show you who they were, the people who attacked and destroyed Israel in the harbinger. And they, after they destroyed Israel, they come down to Jerusalem. And they surround Hezekiah. Mm -hmm. And they get to the wall. One of the, the main guys here gets to the wall and says to, shouts out to the people, says this. This is the Assyrian. Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, by what do you all trust in that you remain in this besieged Jerusalem? Is not Hezekiah leading you all astray to give you over to death by famine, thirst when he tells you the Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria? Has not Hezekiah himself taken down the gods of the high places? Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of other lands? Were their gods, were the gods of the nations able to rescue the land out of my hand? Who from among all the gods of the nations that my father destroyed rescued his people from my hand? Will your God be able to rescue you from my hand? No, do not let Hezekiah trick you. Do not believe him. No God has been able to rescue you. Now, this is the enemy. Mm -hmm. These are the Assyrians. <clears throat> they were the ones who invented terrorism. Right. What they're using is psychological terrorism. And what they would do is they would seek to use psychological terrorism because if the people believed them, they would surrender without a fight. And that is a picture of what the enemy does. He doesn't have real power. He has a false power. He always tries to make you terrified. Right. You know, the word terror always tries to do it. And he always will seek to make you think you're on the losing side, just as they did. Because right. if you're on the losing side, you're going to surrender. But if you're on the winning side, you're not going to do that. So the enemy will always seek to use intimidation, psychological warfare. We have the word panic. The mm -hmm. word panic is a pagan word. Uh -huh. It comes from the god Pan. It comes from the god Pan. Oh. And so it, the enemy is always trying to make you panic. That's mm -hmm. his thing. Mm -hmm. And he will always try to make you panic by giving you a bad report, yeah. giving you something it's right. not quite true, but he's gonna do, it's always going to seem worse than it was. He cannot defeat you unless... You defeat yourself. Yeah. First thing is don't fall into the trap of always reacting to the enemy. The enemy wants to call the shots. Yeah. Don't give that to him. And, you know, you know, what's the difference between a man 
who can't do something and another man who can do something but believes he can't do it. No difference. Either one will not do it. What's the difference between a man who's in a prison and, and, and the door is locked and a man who's in prison and it's not locked, he can go out, but he believes it's locked. Uh -huh. Nothing, the, the one who could do it, won't do it. The enemy will always try to make you panic, will always try to make you believe that he has the power when he doesn't. When we were going to India on this mission, every bad report that could, could have possibly come our way came our way. Uh -huh. They said, they said the, the person who was in charge of the travel agent, of, they took our money and they were to buy the tickets, took off to Spain. There's no tickets. Oh. There was no, I mean, we got every second, we got another bad report. I said, I said, stop, forget it. I don't want to hear any more bad reports. Uh -huh. We're going to India. I went onto the plane with no, I went to the airport with no tickets, literally. And I had to, I had to do, and the Lord worked it out. And then we went on the second plane to go to India. As we're on the plane, I'm looking out the window and pieces of the engine are falling out. <laughs> literally. Wow. They had to land the plane back. I mean, I won't go, but the point was, like, well, that's a real thing. It was a real thing. But the final end of the story does not belong to the enemy. Even if there's a real crisis, the end is not bad news. The end for us is good news no matter what because right. God wins. Yeah. We win. So even when it's real, it's not real because the end belongs to God. Amen. Yeah. So the enemy comes like a roaring lion. Now, the other thing is you cannot fight against what is evil without being strong in what is good. Mm. You have to focus on that. <clears throat> There's a picture, a lithograph of, of Daniel in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he's looking away from the lion. It's like you think, well, if, you're, if you're in a lion's den, you're going to look at that lion. But he's looking away from it. And one of the keys of dealing mm -hmm. with your problems mm -hmm. is to not deal with your problems. And what I mean by that is turn away, turn to God. Mm -hmm. Part of the victory is turning simply to God. Then when you turn back, you're going to be able to deal with it. But you cannot be, the enemy wants you jumping. He wants you always focused on your problem. If you're always focused on your problem, you're not focused on the answer. Right. And our faith is about mm. the answer. And our faith is about the good news. By the, when we, by the end of that, that mission in India, I've never seen such hell come against us and crazy stuff that we had to just ignore it to keep going. Yeah. We had to just keep going. At the end of that mission, I gave an altar call. We saw 70,000 Indians come to the Lord. Wow. Wow. That was the reason. That was the reason. <clears throat> but, but the thing is, we had to keep going and keep going. And one of the keys is the enemy wants to stop you by throwing all, the, all these bad attacks, all these attacks. And you have to say, listen, my faith is not in these people. My faith right. is in God. Yeah. I cannot spend my life looking and listening to all these bad things. I have to spend my life moving forward in what God called me. Yeah. And if I move forward in what God called me, the enemy cannot stop me. He, I will, if, the, if I will not stop, the enemy cannot stop me. So I have to keep moving. And what it tells you, I said, oh, at the end of it, it's about 70,000 people. That's what it was about. Yes. I didn't know it, but the enemy knew it. And so what it, it tells me that, you know, when the enemy, the enemy is always working against the plans of God. Yeah. And so understand it's a revelation. Because not only that, but the specific things that the enemy attacks in your life, take note because those are the very things that God is going to use for his victory. Yeah. So Amen. be encouraged. Encourage yourself even mm -hmm. stronger. Do not believe one that the Bible says is a liar. Why should we believe him? He is a liar. And all the bad news in the end is a lie. Right. Because we are of God who is the good news. Yes. So the very thing, so the more you get the attacks, yes, they're going to be attacks. Yeah. Get encouraged. <laughs> keep going. Keep going stronger. Call his bluff. He's, in, he's not going to touch you if you keep going in God. Amen. And you're going to win. We Amen. take that word, right, Jim? Amen. You Amen. Did, are you getting that in your heart? Oh, my. <laughs> I know you're not supposed to point I, I fingers, but I was like, you already get that I've been in your there, heart. I've been there. I've done that. Yeah. You know, I had that happen. And I'm sure there's thousands watching that oh, just yes. you encourage them yes. because it's uh, at least the devil hasn't invented a whole lot of new things. They, he uses his old stuff, That's right. yeah. but he has that bag of tricks and that's he'll right. try them on you. And you've got to know that, that truly is right. greater is he that's inside of you. That is right. That is right. <clears throat> Absolutely. And we are. You know, being in the end times doesn't stop you from being victorious. We are still to be victorious. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't change. How does that change? If, we're, if we are living in victory, it doesn't matter where we are. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be more dramatic. You, we, and we uh, have, your voice is getting uh, hoarse this week. I mean, it's, there's an allergy season. 
like we've never ever had before. They say, especially in our hills here, yes. that it's it's the worst allergy season. Some people said they've ever ever seen, and it's just beautiful flowers and <laughs> and lots of allergies, <laughs> <laughs> trees blooming yeah. and everything. Right. But you can re you can receive the all these mysteries. These are this is a uh, volume seventeen of the mysteries, right, Zachary? And um, we have there's eight DVDs of Rabbi's teaching, and one of them is the one just now that we just discussed. That's right. And then the re there's even a bonus teaching of it's the National Day of Prayer Speech. So it's eight DVDs plus the National Day of Prayer Speech, and it's all for a donation of only fifty five dollars to the ministry. But we also have a I Love the Rabbi offer. Yeah. <laughs> it's Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. It's the bundle, and it's for a donation of $100. Now, I'm going to read a list of what's in here. Okay. It's a retail value of $620 of DVDs and other, other things. So you have the mystery, which is the eight DVDs, plus the National Day of Prayer speech. You're also going to have the exclusive Epic Holy Land Tour, Volume 1 and Volume 2. It was a um, nearly a two-week tour done with Rabbi Jonathan Kahn uh, uh, in Israel where he's teaching and ministering at several of the different spots that are mentioned in the Bible where Jesus walked an epic, epic And we're tour. all there with him. We're uh, all there. Our, this, this whole team and mm -hmm. and uh, it was a trip, trip of a lifetime. True. And you get to share on beautiful color yes. video Everywhere we walked, oh, everywhere yes. that Jesus walked, we Amen. were there. We were there, and you get to see stuff that n not everybody gets to see. When you go into the new city of David or the old city of David, I should say, that has just recently been discovered and go down where other people are. Probably they say it's the oldest house in oh, perhaps true. in that area that is there down in David's uh, city of David there, which some believe that's... Jerusalem was that was part of Jerusalem. That was that was, that was the original Jerusalem. Yeah, and the original right there. And we may have been right where the ark it, sat. It, it we, could very well have been. Uh, and and the the drillings, the the altars, the mm -hmm. the different yeah. places were there, and nobody gets to see them unless you right. know the rabbi or somebody you know right. who knows somebody, Sorry. and. We literally walked down ladders. They yeah, didn't have stairways. Down ladders, <laughs> ladders Remember that, stairways. Mondo? We, 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 we didn't have, we, we didn't have stairways. You know, that, that wasn't open to the public. No. And all that's this on video. That's right. Yes. It, and it was just and so vi very personal. Lori's favorite, riding on the Sea of Galilee and those old ships. Yes. And yes. the music. Yeah. Oh, you can't believe what it's like to hear the praise to God yeah. in the middle of the Sea of Galilee. And, and, and it's all right. there that it's it's a compl it's a tour that most people don't get to take. Right. Amazing. My son Ricky was with us. He was baptized in the river. Yeah. Well, you were baptized, weren't you? I was. You? I sure was. You were yeah. baptized. Weren't you baptizing people too? No, I wasn't. I was just. Uh, I, I saw I, you in the river. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. Yeah, pretty much in any scene. Uh, there's always going to be a corner of a big guy crying somewhere. <laughs> I, was, I was the guy crying everywhere we went. Zach was, I mean, uh, Zach was just uh, so sweet. And he, he was just... Ricky was time. helping baptize. And, right, he was. And, he was. And he... he, he, he uh, I don't know if that was a beginning, but God's called him to preach the gospel. Yeah. And he is my little preacher boy. Yeah. And he is right now. You pray for him, please. He is in England. He's in the UK on right a, now, actually, uh, on a missions trip. And missions, can you imagine to missions home. to England? England used yeah. to send missionaries out. England, God had breathed upon it. Mm -hmm. And England ruled the world, you might say, the whole world. Because <laughs> everywhere I've traveled in my lifetime, <laughs> England has left <laughs> a mark there. One, but they've <clears throat> lost everything now. One what quarter, went wrong with well, England? Two things. <clears throat> As they preached the gospel, God lifted them up. And as they blessed Israel, God lifted them up. Because mm -hmm. they did bless Israel. They blessed Israel, and they blessed Israel with the land. And so God made them the, have the empire with the greatest land in history. One quarter of the earth was the British Empire. Mm -hmm. One quarter. <clears throat> but just as that, at that moment, they turned against Israel. At that moment, the, wait a minute, it's ahead in the Abraham Covenant, but at that moment, they started saying the Jews cannot return to the land. 
just when the Jewish, I mean, just a few, when the Jewish people needed to get out from Hitler, mm -hmm. they started yeah. closing all the gates, yeah. closing it. They started, they started sinking ships with hostages. They even told Germany, don't let the Jews go to Israel. And at that moment, they did that in 1939. They, they sealed it. 1939 came the war. And right after that, the entire empire collapsed to nothing. Talk about wow. God. <clears throat> Talk about the Abrahamic covenant. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, That's Truman I, was, mm -hmm. was uh, you know, uh, I was alive, of course, when he was, uh, when I, I was not too old when he was president. <laughs> Literally, if it wasn't for Truman, I'm not even, I don't know if I, God would probably have raised up somebody else, of course. But Truman mm. was used of God yes, was. to sign the papers. <clears throat> and more than that, yeah. To... <clears throat> that his agreement was there among the, the countries. Well, just before <clears throat> Franklin Roosevelt, he was president, <clears throat> he made a deal. He gave a word to the Saudi, Saudi Arabia saying he would not let Israel come back be as a nation. Right after that, he died. Truman became the president. Yeah. So it's people, let all of these, these little thoughts right here. Okay. If you started out to do something good, don't do something stupid and turn your back on God. And do stupid stuff. Look what happens. The consequences of turning your back on God is very serious. Yes. Look what happened to England. Mm. England ruled mm. the world. The world. The world. <clears throat> and, and, and she turned her back on Israel. The moment she turned her back, the British Empire was over. The moment. The moment. And look and, what they've done. They, they have just elected a Muslim to be the mayor mm. Of London. Of London, England. I don't, I don't know what that means, except England is in trouble. We will be right back after this special message. Our body has this capacity to heal and to repair and even to rejuvenate at any age. When it comes to looking after our health, the silver solution is one of the most critical things we can always have with us. It, it's the only patented silver that exists. It is approved by the FDA, is approved by the EPA, and has been researched extensively to kill every known pathogen that exists. That's every virus, every bacteria, mold, of all sorts, it can kill black mold even. More than 400 tests and studies from more than 60 different independent institutions and hospitals. The military has looked at this silver and uses this silver. Silver has been proved it can kill MRSA in less than six minutes with no side effects of antibiotics. The ultimate silver soul kit yes. this week you've got a lot of things the brand new book is mm -hmm. is in this set that's great the video sets there two classes yes. on how to really live better mm -hmm. and so they're 125 dollars for one mm -hmm. so 250 dollars for two if you get one you're saving 118 dollars but if you do the three for two special for a donation of 250 dollars you're saving 479 dollars wow. so if you get the three for two deal yes you've saved 479 dollars on right. all this product that's just right. getting one set you've saved yeah it's a, it's a real good deal we start with the silver salt gel and then the silver salt the liquid. Uh, yeah, the uh, liquid. So you have these two, these are the basic, this is mama and papa of the <laughs> whole thing right there. But the liquid can also be put in a spray bottle, sure. which you have there. Right. If you have a sinus infection, yeah. you want to put some silver in that bottle mm -hmm. and spray it up into your sinus cavities. Cause sinus That's an amazing one. Sinus infections can not just be bacteria, they can be mold. Oh. Up in the sinus cavity. So what silver, uh -huh. you kill whatever's there. It doesn't really matter what it is. And then the, the facial cream. Mm -hmm. And we have yeah. also the hand cream there. That is really great. This is one product that also comes with it now. And this is the silver lozenges. And this just absolutely 
is my best friend right this now. This is with an all amazing the allergies. product. If I if I wake up in the night with dry throat, sore throat, or whatever, I take one of these. And all of this is for a donation of $125 to the ministry. Amazing. But we are actually offering a three for two special as well. So for a donation of $250, you're going to receive two entire kits and a third kit as a special bonus. That's a that's a value of $729. Wow. So when you take a silver that acts as an antibiotic but does not have a negative impact on your probiotics, you are preserving your health and addressing the problem at the same time. You can donate to this ministry by calling 1-888-988-1588 or go online to jimbakershow.com. You can also write to Jim Baker at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri 65615. Thank you for your continued prayers and support that helps keep us broadcasting around the world. You know, I've sent word to every president when I had authority to do so. And uh, I don't think they'll listen to me anymore. But I begged them all, always, in my circle of friends, would beg them, please don't turn your back on Israel. One thing, don't do this. This is America's future hinges on how we treat That's right. Israel. That's right. And I'll tell you <clears throat> what, that book... I don't know how many times now there's an il illustration of, of turning our back on Israel. I don't know if you read the book. Uh, it's called Eye to Eye yes. by William Eye to Eye. Eye. Yes. William, William Conan. 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 Who's a White House correspondent. Yeah. Yes. I read his column. He has a good column he, he, from the White House. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he, we have a Christian in the White House, which is encouraging. <laughs> but he wrote this book. And, I mean, probably a hundred times. We turned our back. Every time mm -hmm. we had a meeting, every time we were discussing mm -hmm. even, the next day, mm -hmm. tragedy came to America. Right. That's right. And that's right. That is the most mm -hmm. illustrated sermon of what God will do when you touch his eye, yeah. Israel. <clears throat> and he, <clears throat> he told it to a, think about it, a Middle Eastern tent dweller, old guy, in a tent, mm -hmm. little guy, 4,000 years ago, and what he said to Abram has determined the rise and fall of empires to this day. Oh. To this day. When God, here's another lesson. When God says something, he means it. Yeah. When God gives a promise, he's going to fulfill it. When God gives his word, you better live by it yeah. because he means it. But also, I just want to say, though, in that bundle, Zach, yes. if you could just Yes, that it's up. also going to come with the Harbinger book. Yeah. It's going to come with the Mystery of the Shemitah book with a bonus DVD with actually within the book. And it's also going to come with the Harbinger Man DVD. So you get all yes. of that, the Mysteries Volume 17, the exclusive Epic Land Holy Tour Volumes 1 and 2, all for a donation of $100 to the ministry. That's excellent. Rabbi, I'm hoping you yeah. you could rest your not, voice I'm not a few minutes. Up, I'm not going to give up. Entering the <laughs> heavenly dimension <clears throat> right, this is, is the be... next mystery that's in yeah. in our little I have to give you big <clears throat> big portfolio yeah, today of tapes, <clears throat> and I want you to talk about yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> I have to give you a new revelation about the harbinger, which is going to come right after this. Oh, yes. but, but this one, <clears throat> this one. Is, I'm going to be very quick. I'm just going to give an introduction because I can't do all of them. So there's always one I can't fully do. But I'm just going to give you a hint of it. Okay. <clears throat> if you were in the temple <clears throat> of Jerusalem mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you were entering the presence of God, <clears throat> you walked to the veil, and what you'd see on the veil <clears throat> was the cherubim. It would be an image of the cherubim on that veil. Once you went through that veil, you would be in the Holy of Holies. And in the Holy of Holies, you would see the ark. And on the ark was, again, the cherubim. Yes. But it wasn't an image. It was a, it was a golden statue or golden representation. Mm -hmm. And so what you first saw, when you first were entering, you saw just an image of the cherubim. But when you go inside the Holy of Holies, you see, you see actually a three-dimensional form of the cherubim. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you're there at the glory part, you could actually maybe see the the cherubim, as, as the prophet saw. So what it's telling you is this, and this is just all I'm going to say here, okay. is when you're beginning, there's, God is calling us to enter in. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, it's just a flat 
two-dimensional reality. The cherubim are just two-dimensional. It's just a flat thing. But when you go behind the veil, it becomes three-dimensional. You enter another dimension. The cherubim go from two dimensions to three dimensions. <clears throat> so what it's saying is, as you, there is a way God is calling us to enter in to something even deeper where it's like the dimension of heaven. Paul spoke about dwelling in the heavenlies now, mm -hmm. which is so, so, uh, so deep that it, compared to that realm, this realm is like a flat drawing. If you can imagine what I'm saying, yeah. that there is a way to dwell in God, and I, we can't get into it, but that's what entering the heavenly dimension is about. The more you go, you go deeper in God, it's as if you're going in another dimension, the heavenly dimension. As much as, again, as if you were going, <clears throat> if everything in this world was a drawing, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're seeing reality. Yes. That's what it is. So that's all I can say because it's too much to get into. Oh. But that's one of the things Oh, there. my goodness. And, and you can get this and, on the and It'll be in that set <clears throat> and all that stuff. Right. Yes. That just that set is a, would be worth a hundred dollars. Oh my goodness! And in Absolutely. most ministry things, you'd probably have to pay that to get <laughs> yeah. that many I of, of so. those video teachings, sure. because that would be equal to about eight videos. You yes. Know. So eight DVDs. It'd be it's great. Eight DVDs. Yes. Yeah. DVDs. Yeah. Wow. That's that, wow. Could we roll wait. another piece of sure. the National Day of Prayer? <clears throat> because sure. <clears throat> I, yeah. I've been. We've skipped a couple of them, yeah. and I really want people to. Sure. Go, to, go to that event. It's really, ultimately, we have to be people of hope, and we have to persevere for revival. And I believe that's what they have there. Okay, could you roll that, Mondo? Go ahead. There it is our hope. And the choice in the end is not between one candidate and another. It is between God and Baal. And we stand here at this critical hour between two altars and two gods. And the voice of the Lord cries out, Choose you this day whom you shall serve. Seventy years ago, the chaplain of the United States Senate cried out to America and said, If the Lord is God, then serve him. But if Baal, then serve him and go to hell. That word and that warning is all the more critical today. So we have come to Washington, D.C. not to seek the agency of government, but to seek the agency of the Holy Spirit. Not to lobby those who occupy high office, but to plead with him who occupies the office of the Most High. And not to call on the abilities of man, but to invoke the power of the Almighty for revival. For there is no other way but revival. So we commit ourselves now to pray for that revival. And not only to pray for that revival, but by the power of God to walk in that revival. We have come here because our trust and our hope is not in man, but in God. Specifically, our trust and hope is in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> Boy, Rabbi, that is amazing. And uh, will they get some of that in this video? Yes. Because that is so powerful. The full, the full is in the video. The yes. whole thing, the full right. thing in is in one of, it's added to one of the videos. Yes. The full prophetic thing. I think it's in the apostasy. It is. It is. Yeah. Because you've been talking about, and I don't know if you did in this message or not, about the Harbinger and President Obama. There's a connection yes, there. Yes, there is. And, and we see it, I know over the year and yeah. months, we see even the president signed that beam yeah, yeah, up, yeah. up in the top of the new tower. Yes. And so, could you update us yes. right now? <clears throat> yeah. And if your voice is... No, it's, don't worry about my voice. <clears throat> I mean, people will understand, but let me do it. I mean, I'll do my best. There has been this weird connection between Obama and the Harbingers. And now as we're entering <clears throat> the end of the Obama years... I wanted to kind of sum it up. And then there's something new here. <clears throat> and here it is. I mean, first of all, in the, in the template of the Harbinger, there were, the, the leaders were crucial because the leaders were moving the nation away from God. And so we have watched, and it's not about a person, but it's about what has happened. We've watched the president continually move America. It would happen without him, but he sped it up. Mm -hmm. in the direction of ending marriage, biblical morality, the killing of children, unborn children across the world. We have, we have embraced massively on this in, as part of the policy, mm -hmm. even trying to force, force people who, are, who believe in the Bible to fund abortions, which yeah. never happened before. And so it's been an onslaught, an onslaught. Yeah. But the weird thing is, 
We need to pray for him as well. <clears throat> the weird thing is that the harbingers have been linked to him in some very kind of strange ways. First of all, in the book itself, the very first speech that Obama ever gave mm -hmm. in Congress, in that speech, first months of his presidency, the economy was collapsing, and he gets there, and he makes the center of his speech. He says, tonight I want every American to know this. And then he said, then out of his mouth, he says the ancient vow in modern prose, but it's the same vow that's in every commentary. He says, we will rebuild, we'll come back stronger. And it, all over the world, all over every headline, it says the words of Isaiah. We, president says, we will rebuild, we will rebuild, we will rebuild. Obama vows, we will rebuild, all over the world. But while our economy may be weakened and our confidence shaken, though we are living through difficult and uncertain times, Tonight, I want every American to know this. We will rebuild, we will recover, and the United States of America will emerge stronger than before. If, if on the night of the speech, you had gone to your computer and typed in the words, we will rebuild, it would take you, it would have taken you to Isaiah 9:10 on the first page. Isaiah 9, but once Obama spoke, and you type in the same words, it would take you to his vow, him saying it. So in other words, the vow of the president replaced the vow of ancient Israel of destruction on the internet. All around the world, the vow of the American leader replaced the vows of the leaders of Israel who brought judgment. It took the place all over the world. That was his first major speech. A while later, after the Harbinger came out, actually probably after I was here for the first time, mm -hmm. Obama comes down to ground zero, they show him the, they show him the tower, yeah. and they say, they show him the final beam that's gonna crown the harbinger, put down words, inscribe whatever you want. Yeah. What does he inscribe? Yeah. The same, the same vow of Isaiah 9:10. Incredible. we will rebuild, we'll come back stronger, mm -hmm. puts it on the vow, and actually in ancient Israel, the entire nation was judged as the leaders pronounced this vow, which in Hebrew is only eight Hebrew words. Obama puts on the vow eight English words that match the words of the Hebrew that brought destruction to Israel. Wow. So the highest words in America are the words of defiance on the Tower of Defiance that are of Isaiah 9:10. God orchestrated that the scripture of the harbinger right was spoken, and we run those things, and I never get tired of seeing it. And you brought the pictures of that to our show <clears throat> That's right. a year ago or however it was, where the president wrote it on the very top beam. Do you think, I, I've always wanted to ask you this question. I shouldn't, but I'm going to do it. Do you think that tower still has a place in prophecy yet to be fulfilled? I would watch that tower. I mean, I would, <clears throat> I'd be aware of that tower. In between then and now, the next thing that happened at the second inauguration of the president. Yes. <clears throat> he has a poet who is giving the national poem. Yes. <clears throat> he gives praises not to God, but he gives praises to the works of our hands. Oh, yes, of course. And says, Man's and hands. then he begins to talk about in boasting talks about the harbinger, the tower going up in Obama's inauguration and says that that tower juts up into the sky and, and the heavens yield to our resilience. I mean, that's Isaiah 9:10 at the inauguration. But then there's one more before we get to this one that I just saw. The president comes down to ground zero and he, he reads, he's, he gives a speech and he reads a scripture they give him, but he changes the word of the scripture. The scripture speaks about national blessing. He changes the word, I'm not saying he did it on purpose, but he changes the one word that would speak of blessing and turns it into a, a word that pronounces judgment. And he speaks of the God, God breaking the bow. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. 
He burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Break like that, which is a sign over in the Bible when he's going to judge a nation and break about. As he says it, right across the street is, is the harbinger, is that Erez tree that we will rebuild. We'll plant it on ground zero with its branches all broken off as he speaks it. Yeah. And, and the White House then takes what he said and they, they write it, they put it on their site, but the scripture has changed. They put the word that he changed it to, which changed it from blessing to judgment. Well, let me, let me put it this way. Obama came down again to ground zero on 9-11, September 11th. And he quoted, they gave him a scripture, he quoted from a scripture, but there was something unique about that scripture. It was Psalm 71. And Psalm 71 is unique because in one of its verses, it speaks about the one who is speaking it. Okay? Get this. It speaks about the one who's saying it, and the one who's saying it now is Barack Obama. Hmm. And in that verse that speaks about the one speaking it, it says in some translations, <clears throat> it says, I am a wonder to many. But the Hebrew word is the word mofet. Mofet also means sign. Speaking about the one who's speaking, Obama, I am a sign. But Mofet doesn't just mean that. Mofet is used in the Bible to mean a prophetic sign. Wow. So here it is as Obama saying it, I am a, I mean, I mean it's in the verse, it's, it's identifying the one who says the other verse from the psalm, I am a prophetic sign. Mofet also is used in the Bible to speak of a sign of judgment. So it would be as the one speaking it saying, I am a sign of judgment. Mm -hmm. But there's one more thing about it. And it's all this weird link between the... Okay. In one of the translations of, the, of that verse, it says, I have become an ominous sign or I become an omen. Now listen, the English standard version says, I am a portent. Now, if you take those words, sign, omen, portent, prophetic sign, you do a search program to find what, all, what links all those words together, what another word is also. The word is, listen, the word is ready. The word is harbinger. Oh. Oh. Wow. I am a harbinger. I am a harbinger. It is moving the whole thing full circle. From the beginning, it was always linked to a harbinger. God said, and God said, you know, I mean, you know, leaders are also linked to the mm -hmm. the nation and where it's at. Mm -hmm. But I will not go into it, and we have to pray for every leader. Yeah. But but a leader can also be a sign. And here it is, the la the la kind of bringing it all full circle. I am in that verse identifying this speaker as a harbinger. I am a harbinger. Wow. Wow. We will be right back after this special message. We'll be right back to our show in just a moment. Right now, I want to introduce you to an incredible new offer. Many of our guests like uh, Dr. Forshin and Steve Quayle, Gary Haven, and even Michael Snyder have been sharing with us critical information that we as both a nation and Christians are now facing every day. This isn't a time to be afraid. We know how the book ends, and we know that Jesus is ultimately going to be victorious. It is our duty as Christians to prepare, not just for our household, but to be a lighthouse to our communities as well. You know, several of our guests have stressed about how important it is to have comfort food in your pantry, especially in those troubling times. That is why we at Morningside are excited to offer this brand new around the world dining experience offer, which includes a variety of gourmet foods. This seven bucket offer provides food not only to survive, but to thrive with some of the best foods from around the globe. 
Each of these buckets are actually normally $150 each. That makes this $700 offer a value of actually $1,050. This never before food offer includes the Fiesta bucket with authentic Mexican food such as quesadillas, enchiladas, chicken fajitas, tacos, cheesy nachos, breakfast burritos with scrambled eggs, and so much more. We also have the Italian bucket, which includes one of our favorites, the Italiano marinara. Breadsticks, uh, it also includes macaroni and cheese, fettuccine alfredo, and even pizza. And if you're wanting a nice family meal during the holidays, it also includes the family feast bucket, which is a perfect option, which in, it includes things like turkey and gravy, uh, seasoned stuffing, honey white rolls, creamy mashed potatoes, and even pumpkin pie mousse to top it all off. We also have the 50 days sampler bucket, which includes one of every uh, food found in our tasty foods offer, such as the black bean burger, creamy chicken and rice, the fluffy buttermilk pancakes, and so much more. It's actually a total of 18 different foods within this one bucket. The pizza bucket includes 12 cheese pizzas for any occasion. You know, one of our uh, recent guests, Steve Quill, revealed that one of the first items to disappear in a crisis is fruits and vegetables. That's why we've included this offer, the fruit and vegetable variety buckets. The fruit variety bucket contains juicy strawberry slices, banana chips, diced apples, whole raspberries and blueberries, along with spiffy whip to turn any fruit into a five-star dessert. The vegetable bucket comes with a variety of vegetables, including sweet peas, diced potatoes, sweet corn, green bean, broccoli, and chopped onions, and can be combined with any meal. So call today, toll free 1-888-988-1588 to start your around the world dining experience with a donation of just $700 plus shipping. That toll-free number again is 1-888-988-1588. You can also write to Jim Baker at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri 65615. These buckets and so much more can also be found on our website at jimbakershow.com. We want to thank you for your prayers. And we want to also thank you for your financial support that helps keep this ministry broadcasting around the world it's going to be so action-packed over the next the rest of this year so much is going to happen it's going to be a shaking okay could we write that down it's going to be a shake there's going to be a shaking and it's a shaking which is a warning what you share with us much of it was written several thousand years ago it hasn't changed as you study the depth of the Hebrew, and then you see it translated into the Greek, and uh, you see Jesus Christ, the Word, He is the Word, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. That's what you can stand on. That's where your security is. That's where your peace is. To know this Bible. When I was in prison, I wrote out every word Jesus spoke, I right. wrote it out, and then I, I, I made it uh, full, and then I'd abbreviate it so I could uh-huh. memorize it. Here, here's the book right here. This is the actual photograph and, and the book made up. There's my original writing from the prison cell. This is from the words of Jesus, and this is everything Jesus said a follower of him is, a Christian is. And then I, I wrote down, what a Christian does and then what a Christian does not do. Here's notes that I just scribbling notes from the pad Mm -hmm. from the prison cell. This is a Bible. It is a a large print Bible. But the thing of it is it has and I just feel some of you really need to And you really need to get founded on the word. I want, in that prison, Mm -hmm. I devoured the word. It changed my life. 
And so we're trying to finish Lori's house. We, we finished it, but we didn't build the daycare. And, and we found out that ladies need to be able to bring their children sometimes when they're having another baby. Let's, let's just go 45. It'll be nice. Let's do a 45. Okay. And I'll give you this free to study the words of Jesus from the prison cell of Jim Baker, it says. When, and, you, when uh, you order the Bible. When you order the Bible. Yes. So just, you get them both. Okay. But, and it's in this wonderful large print. Yeah. Uh, giant print. And I it's, it. and it's, uh, it, it's red a red letter. letter mm -hmm. So, and it's got maps and stuff in it. But I want you to start reading this. That's the end. And yes. read the, you can read the red first. If you haven't read the Bible a lot, get, get into Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then you run everything by him. Check right. with Jesus. If you get to know the voice, and that's why this book here was so important to me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know, it, it, what does he say? My sheep know my voice. Yes. And I wanted to know his voice. Right. Well, that's when, when I got to over there in Third John, where, it, you know, it, it, it talked you know, above all, God wanted you to be rich. Mm -hmm. and, and I knew Jesus never said, Jesus said, woe unto the rich. Jesus never talked about the love, good things being loving money, you know. And if you'll start running everything by Jesus, it will clear up your doctrine. Mm -hmm. It will clear yeah. up your, uh, what's, you know, because a lot of people just say, I just don't know what to believe. Mm -hmm. This one tells me this, this one. Well, believe the word. And remember, Jesus Christ is the Word. Yes. So this is, uh, uh, let's know the Word. Can we do a know the Word or <laughs> offer or something? Yeah, that's for, a good t title. What we'll do is we'll use this to... Uh, know the Word. What we'll do is this, the, any profit from this mm -hmm. will go to build that nursery. We're trying to do that. <laughs> we had another mystery that we were supposed to talk about, but we won't take, we won't do that today. It's yeah, the, we can hold that. The Yad, Yad, the is secret that the of, right word? Secret of the Yad. 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 It's the secret of overcoming. It's really cool, but it, it's, it, it's in there. So, so that'll yeah. be in the, the set. That'll, that'll be in, that'll the, be in the, the, set. the album. Yes. <clears throat> For $100, you're Yad. getting a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff. So we got, we did almost everything, yeah. little highlights. Yeah. And they'll get it all yeah. in the book. They'll in get the, much the more. Tape. Yes, yes, no. much more. And much then more than your more. new book. Will it, will we introduce it? I think I think the you next will. Time? I think the next time I'm here, I'll have. Well, I leave half, or I will find the book here for the first time, and I'll I have my voice as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But, but <clears throat> it will be it will be the premiere, as far as I know, mm -hmm. as the Lord used it last uh, every other time. It will be the new book, which I'm still finishing while I'm here, <laughs> but it already has a cover, and it's already, they're getting yeah. ready to get it right on there, which will be called The Book of Mysteries. And as it is, The Harbinger has a mystery, opens up a mystery. This is going to open up hundreds of mysteries mm -hmm. of everything, yeah. of yeah. everything. Oh, of so everything. That, that's that's the cover. Don't yeah. order it. It's, it's, it's not... not it's not out. It's not yet. been printed. It's not yet. out yet. He's but still writing but it. that is what it's going to look the like. The mystery is where that picture came from. That's somewhere. Right. That that actually there is a mystery to where that came from. <laughs> that, that picture, there is a mystery there. I like yeah. it. Yeah. So that's going to be. I'll next time I'm here, we'll, I'm okay. sure we can give it. Yeah. We're going to have a song, right? Do you have you yes. do we have enough singers yes. and musicians oh, there yes today? Yes, we do. Anybody to help <sighs> me? I was going to pick soon and very soon. We're going to see the king, because it's going to happen. And remember. We do have in stock right now this unit three, That's version right. three of the generator. That's right. And we have them. They're there. And a miracle, really, I mean, it's just a miracle that a company had ordered them. And we have so many orders coming in that people want this unit that the manufacturer said, we can have the orders at another company that we, we have priority anyway. So we have these now available. That's great. To send to our people because yeah. they've been ordering so like right. crazy. But this is the new model. And it, it actually has a system that charges from the sun faster That's than right. the, the older model did. Yes. It, so it, it really is. It, people are kind of thrown off by the, sh the shape of it. But it's just a, a new exterior between the, third, uh, between the second and the fourth model. 
and but they've done yeah some tweaking. It's going to be charging a lot faster, but it's still the same price. It's only seventeen hundred and eighty-four dollars. Yeah, and it's going to be a lot more than that when the, the new, new one, one comes out. Yes, and it even comes with the 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 bonus of the five hundred dollar retail value of the solar panel, and it comes with the fifty dollar retail value of the twenty foot solar extension cord, uh, a multi cooking toolkit. And even some gourmet food. It's three days for two people. And it's all of this for a donation of only $1,784 to the ministry. And everything you order, part of it all goes to keep the voice of the prophets, the PTL Television Network, on the air. We will be right back after this special message. Are you prepared to function without the power grid? We've talked at length on The Jim Baker Show many times about these dangers, and we're so excited that many of our partners have stood behind this ministry and helped to support us as we continue to carry messages like these. You know, the makers of our fuelless generator are hard at work on a brand new model, but they've released a special limited edition generator as part of a special offer. There are only a few hundred of these in the warehouse, and when they're gone, so will your chance of getting a generator for several months. Don't let what you see fool you. Under this black case is the same foolish generator we've been offering for more than a year. It, is still, it still features the incredible lithium-ion technology and can even charge just a little faster than our other generator. On the front, as you can see, there are four USB ports that allows you to charge your cell phone, uh, your iPad, your iPhone, any, any device that requires a USB port to charge. It has two standard AC power outlets, so you can run your refrigerator, your freezer, or even a microwave. It can also power a big screen television, uh, a clothes washer, and power tools, and so much more. You can also power any device that uses the Anderson connector. And by using a 12-volt car outlet, you can plug in your favorite portable cooking pots, your, your coolers, or even our 12-volt heating blanket. Take a look at the LCD screen here. It will show you not only how much the generator has been charged, but also the amount of wattage that is charging the generator and the amount of wattage that it's pumping out. So if the front end is your output, let's take a look at the back side. So I'm just gonna flip this generator around for you. And you see, you'll notice we have one port to plug in your AC power cord, one Anderson port, and we're also gonna have a key slot. Your generator will come with a set of keys that you can keep with the generator to safely power it on and off at any time. And what's neat about this generator is that you can have up to four solar panels connected at any time. But there's only one port, you may say. That's no problem at all. Let's take a look at the solar panel that you'll receive with this generator. It's the exact same folding panel we've been sending out with all of our generators and the panel that you can order on its own. When you open it up, you'll see that there are two Anderson connectors. Using these, you can daisy chain up to four solar panels. Let me show you how this works. First, take the long cord from your first panel and plug it into the shot cord from the second panel, like this. See, it's that easy. And you can have up to four of these hooked up at a time. When you do this, your generator will charge in less than two hours. We are so dependent on energy today. And this limited edition fuelless generator will give you the power you need when you need it the most. You can receive this limited edition fuelless generator for a donation of only $1,784 or more to the ministry. You will also receive the folding solar panel the 20-foot solar panel extension 